What's Crackalackin? It's your boy Brush Mode, just in case you did not know so. And we're back for NFL Draft Grades. We're going over the NFC North. We're going to see how they did. And uh, before that, just quick thank you to everyone that came out for the draft party. That's right, I said it in all these dang videos. But I just want y'all to know how much I do appreciate that. There was a lot of support and we had a great time. Go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoy the content that's always much appreciated much obliged uh we're only talking about how they did in the draft undrafted free agents do not count so for detroit uh hunter bryant great pickup but i'm not gonna talk about it uh let's go let's talk about how the grading system works here real quick goes from a plus to f uh, if your team got a c plus it means you had a very average you had an average draft you did okay so don't get don't get butt hurt you did all right you did some things bad you did some things good uh for the most part it was okay you got a d a subpar draft you probably reached on players you made some trades you shouldn't have you did yeah it was okay it was less than okay less than ideal i don't get it's hard for me to give out f's i think you're really thrown at that point maybe even a whole front office overhaul no f grade so Packers fans, don't worry. Uh, B's, B's, they're above average, but above average drafts. Maybe some safe drafts. Uh, maybe they drafted some really good guys, but they kind of balanced it off with maybe some head scratcher picks. And then A's, A's, I try to give out uh, like a, just a few, just teams I think that did phenomenal. That really they got value when. In, they got they just got value in the draft they got value value fell to them they took it they jumped on it they made some savvy trades uh maybe they made some boneheaded picks but more times than not they they were hitting it on the head they were hitting the nail on the head bam nail on the head but yeah uh i guess let's go ahead and let's uh, get into this because detroit i gave y'all an a minus i really like detroit's draft Jeffrey Okuda, I think uh, he was mocked there forever. They couldn't get a trade done, which was unfortunate. They really wanted to trade back, but it didn't happen. But they got the guy that everyone assumed they were going to get. He offers, he just gives them a potential all pro press coverage man corner. Good on y'all. Uh, DeAndre Swift in the second, at the beginning of the second, I'm indifferent about. I get it. I thought they would have went with maybe Jonathan Taylor instead, a little more, more, uh, more of a north-south runner, more of a, yes, run you over bruiser type. But they chose the, they ch chose probably the most well-rounded running back in this draft in Swift. He's not the most elusive or explosive, but he's a very good receiving back. He does a lot of things well. He's going to be a good, good. He's going to be a good compliment to carry on Johnson, but I'm not too big on drafting running backs early. Julian Akawar, unbelievable value. A guy I had a first round grade on. You got him in the third. Jonah Jackson, I thought made a lot of sense. I was I was mocking him a lot when I did um, three round or seven round mocks. So I thought that made a ton of sense. And then they paired that up on day, day three with Logan Steen, uh, Stenberg phenomenal i think they got two starting guards right off the bat i i loved that pick uh quintez cephas i like it a lot the guy he's not gonna give you a lot of, he's not he's not a speedster but he's a very good route runner uh very big bodied and he's overall just a good receiver jason huntley though hated the pick had no idea he wasn't even on my rankings so they grabbed him in the fifth bit of a head scratcher but they ended it strong with john and John Penis Eni, best name in the draft. He's ideal for Matt Patricia's defense. He's a two-gap defender. I thought great value in the sixth round. Sean Cornell, the guy that was getting some day two hype, they got in the seventh. So I thought they did really, really good to end the draft. They did a lot of good things at the beginning. Really good draft for the Lions. So Lions fans, you should be very happy. Chicago Bears, I gave them a B minus. It started out rough. Cole Komet. I didn't love the pick. And they already had so many tight ends on the roster. They paid Jimmy Graham $16 million for two years. So 
it didn't make sense to me. I and I he's not the not it's not like he's a very good receiving tight end. I assume they think they have a really good one in Jimmy Graham who's on the downslope of his career. But they really made it up with the next three picks. Jalen Johnson, phenomenal, immediately probably gonna be a starter there. Uh Travis Gibson gives them a very, very good run defender immediately. Something um, I think is very good for Robert Quinn, who is someone who's kind of struggled in run defense. Um, it's not it's not like he's bad, but Gibson he could come down or he could come early on those running downs and really be a difference maker while he develops into a better pass rusher. Darnell Mooney, absolute weapon. He's going to be a weapon. He was I kept calling him KJ Hamler Light. I love the pick, and then they kind of ended it off with. Two guys I didn't have on my board at all uh, in the seventh round. And I get you're just kind of taking shots in the, seven, in the seventh round, but they grab two guys for the offensive line that I'm, I think might have a hard time even making the roster. Just my opinion there. Then we go to the Minnesota Vikings. They were one of three teams that I dished out A-plus grades to. They were great. They hit this draft out of the water. They, with their first four picks, I think they got first round talents. Uh, Justin Jefferson, well, I don't think was the best fit off the bat, but thinking about it, Kirk Cousins, he's really going to appreciate a receiver like Justin Jefferson. Jeff Gladney was a great pick there to end the first round with. Ezra Cleveland in the second, he was a guy that was talked about maybe as a first rounder, but he ended up falling. They got a guy that could be a eventual replacement for Riley Reef and Cameron Dantzler, I love him. He shut down the SEC for three seasons. Knocks on his speed, on his size, on his arm length. Forget that the guy's a big receiver. He's a tall receiver. That he he can be. Did I say receiver corner that can shut down any receiver. I think that move's gonna. I think that pick's gonna pay dividends more like sooner rather than later. DJ Wollum though was a bit of a head scratcher for me. A guy that. I had a seventh round grade on. He was, he's, he's gonna need some time to develop. He's got traits, but I didn't like it. But they brought it back with James Lynch, a guy who would come in and immediately be a three tech for them. Troy died. They got great value in. Fall into the fourth. I like that. Uh, KJ Osborne, a guy I wasn't too high on initially, but Bills Mafia made me come round to him sooner than later. So I think. He can be uh, maybe not an immediate contributor, but he does give them some good depth there. Uh, Blake Brand Brandell out of Oregon State. I had as a seventh rounder, so I don't know. I was kind of like whatever. Josh Metlis was kind of a he was a whatever pick to me. He was a so-so. I mean, this was about where I thought he'd get drafted anyway. But Kenny Willicks in the seventh round. That's a steal. He's a immediately a very good run defender for this squad nate stanley fall into the seventh i think he he's a guy with high upside just he's never really i guess achieved or shown that he can achieve that type of upside if anything i've been saying he's going to be a stellar backup for years to come so they get him in the seventh brian cole bit of a project good story though uh kyle hinton it was a guy that was getting a lot of hype uh, days before the draft out of Washburn. So they got some maybe some good developmental depth there on the offensive interior. Overall, I think they hit this draft out of the park with what they were given. They had a load of picks, and I think a lot of these picks might pay off in the long run. Now, let's get to my worst draft grade. The Green Bay Packers, I gave them a D minus. I wanted to, I, I was so tempted to give an F, but like I said, it's so hard for me to dole out an F grade. Jordan Love, I get that that was they were probably looking. I was like, we want, we think he can be our quarterback of the future. We understand he may need a little time to develop. So they trade up for him, give up a fourth rounder to move up. Okay. I'd rather I, I assumed they would have tried to put some more pieces around Aaron Rodgers to make a run, but then I assumed you know what they got their quarterback in the future. That's great. They'll probably now start getting some weapons for Roger because Rodgers because they don't have any receivers outside of Devonte Adams, at least dominant receivers. 
But they didn't do that. They go AJ Dillon in the second. I had a fourth round grade on him, maybe a fifth uh, at best. A guy that won't impact the passing game. They already have Aaron Jones. They already have Jamal Williams. I just really didn't like the pick there. And then they pair they they finish off day two with Josiah Degar, who was a guy I loved in this draft, but not in the third round. I had a I think a fifth or a sixth round grade on him. Guy that I thought could probably be like the like a maybe a fullback hybrid like they have in San Francisco. But they get him in the third round. I'm just like, I don't know what they're doing. Maybe they'll turn around in day three. Uh, I like the Kamal Martin. Pick up a guy with a lot of athletic upside. He played a lot of slot, but I think moving to linebacker will probably be better for him in the long run. Kind of like we we are expecting it's going to happen with uh, Devon, Davion uh, Taylor from Colorado. So I was like, okay, I could get behind that, but there's some receivers falling. They should address receiver. Instead, they address offensive line with the next three picks. Jack Hansen, a guy with pen like penalty problems out of the wazoo. Don uh, Runyon, who's who was an okay pick there in the sixth. They got the Indiana, I think, guard or tackle, which was like whatever. Vernon Scott didn't even have on my board. Safety out of TCU, head scratcher. Probably the only real value they got here on day three was Jonathan Garvin, who I had a fourth round grade on, but he was a guy with some uh, effort effort red flag so i yeah dude they this was bad this was a bad draft i don't think it was so much as a throw because i can see i can see the i can see them look into the future but after the jordan love pick they did nothing to really help aaron Rodgers out now this just was an abysmal draft for the packers um and they were lucky they didn't get enough <laughs> d minus but that's it for the video. Go ahead, do the YouTube thing. That's always much appreciated, much obliged. And as always, my friends, till next time, you be easy. Later.